Hey, so if you're one of those students, right, who really hates those diagrams like this because they are low quality, very hard to decipher, it's a micro graph image, and you always suffer at these kind of questions, then this video is for you. I'm going to teach you how to decipher them. Even if the diagram is horrible and low quality, which it usually is, um, you can still get the answers, okay? You can always still get the answers. And actually, the secret, if you want to just know the, the short summary of this video, is all about using the clues that are available in the diagram. Okay, use the clues and how will you recognize them is by having good content knowledge first. So if you are good with your content you study, I will now be showing you how to use the clues in the diagram. Okay, I feel the same way when I look at these. It's also quite difficult to decipher, but I always just rely on my clues. Then I can decipher what's actually going on. So imagine you get this question, right? And they ask you what is A, B and C in this diagram? Firstly, what in the world is going on here? It looks like a cell, right? And actually, I'll give you a hint. The first step to solving this question is to figure out what is C. What is that organelle, right? Since this is part of a cell. So if you said mitochondria, you're on the right track, but you will get it wrong because it's actually singular. They're only pointing to one, so it's mitochondria. Now, if you didn't know how I get mitochondria or mitochondrion since it's one, then look at this. In the cell diagram, right, we usually would see mitochondria with a line, okay? So this is a very simplified and nice looking one, and you'll see the line. So look at this. I have highlighted, I have like circled with my pen where is the mitochondria and the lines as well okay so you can see the lines inside i basically just made it more obvious you can do the same for this one over here let me show you this one over here as you can see there's so many tiny lines inside right so it's mitochondria all these are called mitochondria so let's see b looks quite hard let's do a first okay so what's a now when i did this question with my own students a lot of them thought that a is a cell but why is that wrong why is it that a cannot be a cell because i have some clues so remember it's all about using the clues in the diagram this is a boundary right and then all this stuff in the image is within that boundary. So why would there be all these organelles and all these membrane and little vesicles around? Why would they all be in the same boundary? It makes no sense if this is a cell on its own. Then there should be quite a lot of emptiness. It shouldn't be so detailed with so much organelles, right? I would expect to see one cell and then maybe another cell and another cell. So this object, which is A, is not a cell. A lot of people thought it was a cell. Second clue. Once I identify what C is, C was pointing to just one of them. So mitochondrion, right? Then I will know, wait, in my content knowledge, I know the size difference between mitochondria and the entire cell. And so that actually leads us to the previous page. You see this? So look at how small the mitochondria is. Actually, this image is a simplified diagram. In real life, mitochondria are even smaller than this. So if you look at this, can this really be a cell? Right? Look at the size comparison, the proportion. Okay, can it be a cell? Probably not, right? It's way too small to be a cell. Mitochondria are not so massive. It makes no sense. So it cannot be a cell. What can it be? Well, actually, it's the nucleus. Because if you look inside here, what is an object that looks similar in size? And then look at what's inside. You see, it's very grainy, right? You see all these dot, dot, dot. Yeah, so this is characteristic of DNA inside the nucleus. Okay, because the all these black spots you see is they usually stain the whole slide under the microscope with a dye. And the dye likes to bind to DNA. So that's why there's a lot of it concentrated in the nucleus. So A is the nucleus. Okay, last one. What is B? B is a difficult one. So there are two possible answers that people will think of. One is maybe it's a Golgi apparatus. Because we know the Golgi apparatus or Golgi body is made of many of these stacks, right? Something like this over here, right? It looks something like that, which is why people might choose Golgi body. But this is the trick, right? Examiners are not so bad to you. They won't choose something that looks so weird and it doesn't have a distinct shape and expect you to say that's Golgi body. Notice the shape of the Golgi apparatus, right? It has like a Wi-Fi fan shape, like this kind of shape, right? Like a Wi-Fi. And the other one is just flipped. So it still has the same shape. So this is characteristic of Golgi body. If they were to ever ask you, what is this object? You would just say Golgi body because it has that characteristic shape. But this one over here, are they going to make you say Golgi body when they give you this shape? No, it's such a weird shape. Okay, so it's not. So this cannot be Golgi body because the examiners are really not that nasty to you. They would choose something that looks very obvious. It's Golgi body if they wanted to ask you that. So it's not. It has to be one of the endoplasmic reticulum, either the rough or the smooth ER. So how do we know which it is? Well, look at these two diagrams over here. Rough ER has okay, ribosomes studded on it. So look at all the black dots. See this? These are all ribosomes. This is the RER up close. So that's what we expect to see. Many black dots. Ribosomes. Smooth ER looks similar, but there are no black dots. Plus, it looks more irregular. Look at the shape, right? It's more irregular. Like, look at all this. It's fatter, right? Than uh, what you would see on the rough ER. So those are the two ways I know whether something is smooth or rough. Are there those black dots? Ribosomes. And look at the shape. Is it more irregular and is it fatter, wider? So now look at this. Which one does this look like? So does it have black dots? No. And it's irregular, right? You see like here, there's a white one and then here's a narrower. Here's much narrower. This is very obviously the smooth ER, not the rough ER. So where is the rough ER in this diagram? We can't see it actually. It might be like on the other side of the cell. It might be just further out. We can't see it. But all this stuff here that you see, a lot of it is just smooth ER. Okay, all this stuff, it's smooth ER running throughout the cell, a lot of it. So maybe this cell requires a lot of lipids and steroid hormones. That's Or maybe it's heavy 
heavily involved in detoxification. That's why you have smooth ER because those are the functions of smooth ER. Okay, next question. Let's look at this. I know this is another difficult one. So background info tells you this is found in the small intestine. What is this? So the first thing I would do is look at the zoomed out diagram, the further one. What is this finger-like structure? And it's in the small intestine. What do we learn about small intestine, right? So we learn there are villi in small intestine. So if there are villi and there are finger-like protrusions, what do you think this is? The villi, right? So they're testing you on that. This is the villi. Okay, good job. We have identified what is this object. Next, we need to fill in three blanks. You see the one at the top and middle and bottom. Okay, let's try and do the one at the top first. So what I notice about the one at the top is it's pointing to this section, right? And look what it contains, red blood cell. Then the other one, the other example that they are giving also is a tubing, some kind of tube that contains red blood cells again. So what are the tubes in our body or that will be found in a villi or villus since it's singular? What are the tubes that will contain red blood cells? So I'll let you guess. Okay, if you say blood capillary, good, you're close. But look at this particular one. We have to say with a plural. Okay, forgive the handwriting here. Capillaries. Okay, with an S. Because they're pointing to the two, not just one. Yeah, so let me remove that disgusting handwriting. Okay, so next we've solved this one, blood capillary. Okay, now we need to solve um, the middle and the bottom one. Let's look at the middle one. So it's a layer of cells, right? They're pointing to a layer. So what is this layer? Then a good clue would be to look at the bigger diagram because you see, they also have it shown on the bigger diagram and they're pointing to this particular layer here. It's actually longer than this. So what is this layer of cells? And one more clue that would help you is where is it located? So we have this, right? This diagram, this is from your content knowledge. Okay, then I want you to look at this. I have annotated on this diagram already and this portion, I wrote empty. Okay, so I'm trying to shade this and show you that this is empty space. It's not like a part of the villas. How do I know? Because I looked at the other diagram. Okay, and look, I have outlined using purple color the individual villi. I've outlined them. So I've seen that, oh, okay, in between them, there's this empty space, right? So there's no villi material there. So in between here, okay, I'll just like put a star. This is empty space, right? It's an in-between space. Another one is here and there's another empty in-between space. So when I saw this, I tried to look where is it located on the zoomed out diagram. And looking at this box, right, they've pointed here. Okay, I'm going to erase things so it's easier. Yeah, they've pointed right here. And on the right of it, there's an empty space. So if on the right, there's an empty space. So on the right, this is the empty space they're talking about. Okay, not bad. So now I have, yeah, I've gotten more clues that this is the empty space. So this layer of cells, it confirms for me that this layer of cells is indeed like the outermost layer of this structure, right? Because if you just look at this diagram, you can't tell that this is empty space. You would think that, hey, maybe this is part of the whole villas. And, you know, this might be the center of the villas. You, you're not sure. But by looking for clues from this zoomed out diagram, I was able to tell that, wait, this part corresponds to this part, right? So that means what's on the right must be empty space. Okay, so that's my whole point of like outlining the villas. I'm trying to show you where is the empty space. So good, now that we know that, what is the type of cells that lines the outermost of the villas? So what are these cells? So if you said epithelial cells, yeah, good job, because I actually gave you the answer here, right? Epithelial cells are the type. But what is the tissue? Because they're trying to show a whole layer, right? So what is that layer called? Okay, it's called epithelium. Let's see if I can write with my mouse. Yay! Okay, so epithelium is the type of tissue that's made out of epithelial cells. Another clue that I got from this um, image, okay, if you look closely, you will see very faint lines, many, many lines this way. Okay, why would there be so many lines? What are these lines, right? See, there's more here, there's more. It just keeps on going, right? There's so many lines. What are these lines? So if you guess they are the microvilli, good job. They are microvilli, so they are tiny protrusions. They look like little strands of hair. And if you look at this, yeah, this part that I showed you here, this is a simplified diagram, but in reality, there are many more of these um, protrusions, not, not so few. So those are the microvilli, and we're actually seeing the texturing with all these tiny lines here. So it has confirmed again that yes, I'm right, this is epithelium. This tissue is epithelium. Okay, so even though the diagram is very hard to decipher, but using the clues from our content knowledge, we try and piece things together just like a detective, right? We are adding multiple things together to confirm that yes, it must be that because there's evidence one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, and last one, this over here. So this is actually the easiest one now because it's pointing to the middle part of the villus. And what's in the middle? Look at this, lymphatic capillary, also known as the lacteal. So I will write here. Okay, why is it so large? Why is the lumen of the lacteal so large? It is meant to be that way. This is why fat globules get absorbed in into there because fat globules cannot go inside the blood capillaries. The blood capillaries are too small. The walls are also not permeable enough for such large objects to come in, but the lymphatic capillary is able to do that. So the lacteal is where fats are absorbed. Okay, so good job. Those are the two examples I wanted to show you guys. And once again, you can do it even though the diagram is difficult, I know it's hard. I know it's uh, low quality most of the time when it's finally printed out for you to do, but it is possible to do. You just need to look for clues using your content knowledge. So even if the diagram is bad, you can still do it. You can still get correct. Just be careful and look for clues.